This woman had acid thrown at her at a New York subway station. So as I was on my way to work at the New York City hospital, a woman that I didn't know took acid on my face as I exited the train. After the acid was thrown, it was excruciating pain. And immediately after I just started screaming because it was really painful, then I got into like unknown substance protocol where I removed all of my clothing because the acid had burned through everything I was wearing. I was wearing a coat, scarf, thing, scrub. The female predator already seemed very suspicious to Juanita. We were on the train prior to the assault itself, and she was already, like, um, arguing with random people. So I just had a gut feeling something was going to happen, but she followed me down the whole platform. So I got right into the train, and I got into the train, and I was going to get out of the train. So that's why I did um, record. Juanita sustained multiple injuries across her face from this attack. That I have a third-degree and second-degree burn across the side of my face, and basically the acid, like, disintegrated my skin. I had a, multiple surgeries where they had to like remove the top layer of skin, remove my nostrils, then my lip actually was lifted and tightened. I also got a second degree burn behind my ear because from the angle that she threw it, it was like a bit behind me. And all I had time to do was like two inches. So I also burned a bit of my hand and this is all burned still. So it's a whole scar on the bottom of my chest. This incident definitely had a big effect on my self-esteem because um, prior to the assault, like, I wasn't really like a makeup type of wearer. Like, I never really considered myself to have, like, a lot of insecurities because I just was, like, happy with the way that I looked. So after having the assault and I have a whole scar across my body, my face that I didn't know how it would heal, it had a, an effect on, like, my friendships because it was, like, I didn't really want to go outside. Like, for the first eight months after the assault, I didn't really want to go anywhere. I just didn't feel comfortable. So, yeah, like, I would just can't keep canceling plans and stuff, and I would kind of feel like people weren't trying to, they weren't actually caring. It, like, it, I went through a whole bunch of emotions of, like, you know, like why me if I'll ever look the same like look at how I did before or like you know just things like that like or if everybody's gonna look at me like I'm a disabled patient 24 7 and if I'm ever gonna be able to be like a regular in my 20s again I would say I began healing definitely with the people that I surrounded myself with um my family is like my biggest support system my parents my mom and my sister will always like be there for me regardless so I think my support system definitely had a really good effect on how I was healing and then I also stayed in therapy so um, my therapist helped me a lot too because she definitely gave me like coping mechanisms and ways to like change my perspective about certain things. Juanita shared her story on TikTok and it gained a lot of traction. So when I first came out about it, I didn't expect it to go as far as it did and people were coming out with like, you know, asking the questions about mental health. My number one message always is about mental health and it's really just that, like I always say, like they, some days are harder than others, but you can push forward and it may seem hard and it may seem impossible but it's not it's really not impossible it's just you need a strong support system or you need someone to listen to you like a therapist or a coping mechanism or anything i've lived a very like courageous life and i've dealt with some traumatic experiences that have only pushed me forward to continuously do more than i thought i would ever be able to like get a degree and eventually become a doctor eventually become a surgeon and do my surgeries